we just question is there is who is it that's stuck or unstuck and then the belief and the observation of this is if you if it's not you stuck you're going to lose interest in the stuck yeah and then you may not be driven to try to unstuck it which just creates this whole you know what i mean the seeking and everything yes so call uh, maybe on the phone hmm? hold on a second yeah i'm just uh can you hear me mike yep can right. you can you see me yep it's like the song tom in the who and you're nicely framed can you see me <laughs> so we we uh we have a guest here today so we're just going over this one idea all right yeah we got a lot of uh, newcomers for online anyway here all right well we'll jump in so like the other day someone said uh at a meeting we did you know all this stuff was getting revealed and it's me you know and the i did the uh the direction of this message is that presentation of me building to that huge crescendo because you're uncomfortable, whatever, is great. Not about the me, but who is that me? If it isn't you, then it, you can there can be an honest telling of what you're seeing. Yeah. So you'll see selfing. You'll see the head using what's going on and making up most of it, really, but using whatever's going on to uh, prove its sort of point, which is you're a long lasting, independent, separate thing. Yes, you're set, you know, you're in a sense of dependency because you can't take care of everything yourself in here. It has to be met out there, it produces anxiety and fear about, am I going to be okay? Or will lose what I have or get what I not get what I want. Yeah. All this stuff triggers based on this premise that you're a singular separate thing. Yeah. So uh, how that keeps getting reinforced is the interest and attention of our day being directed there all the time. Yeah. Not be, the only reason why really is it's because it's you, because you're not directed there for other people most of the time. Yeah. So this is the weakening of that you, and therefore the interest and attention, when that little magnetic pull is weakened, it can go somewhere else and it may end up, you know, enriching your Saturday instead of enslaving it, using Saturday to enslave you, slave to the idea that you're stuck. Yes and you were stuck Friday, and you'll probably be stuck next week, yeah? And then it could be very interesting, the topic, but but the, the topic isn't what's generating the interest, it's you, yeah? Or someone else who thinks they're stuck, yes? So we're, we're going before that and not paying much time after that, yeah? Because I found, uh, Stuck and unstuck is like dualistic, yes? The whole idea of non-duality is negation of this dualism of many, and the many ways it manifests and appears. And one of them is stuck, unstuck, yeah? So there's a you, but the you is sort of, so it's like a seesaw, stuck, unstuck, unstuck, stuck, yes? But the axle of it is you, the idea of you. So we're not trying, because see, if you're here, and you want to be unstuck when you run up the thing, it goes root, and now you're stuck. And yes, it's you that's causing, giving the meaning to the stuckness or the unstuckness. This is you, the small self. So if you lose interest in that, you lose interest in what comes after it. Yeah, because truly what, in most cases, what came after it is before it. Yeah, there was an uncomfortable feeling and then the tag stuck with, like, you know, before it's shipped out to, <laughs> you know, your, your Amazon delivery of the day, stuckness, and then they have 40, th 40 things to sell you that will unstick you. And it just goes on and on and on. And it, because the one axis of allowing all this movement really is you. And so we're going there not to try to stabilize because you're not, yeah? You get here, you want to go there. You get up there, yeah, yeah, it's a, yes, yeah. And 
you are playing the biggest role. Hmm? Exactly, it's scary. If it's, but it is a small self, if you want to use that terminology. It's not if, it is. There's no self, truly, in a way, yeah? So the idea that it's, if it is, it ain't. There's no reality to it. It's appearing to reality to be so. We are on the, we play the role of reality here. We know play, we seem to think we're playing the role of who gets stuck, but we are actually reality, yeah? Yes, or let's call it awareness, whatever. It's because for you to know you were stuck and have a feeling around it, you'd have to see something first. And then that whatever you was seen gets interpreted to imply that you're stuck. Yeah, just like people have a hard time discerning what's anxiety and what's excitement, you know? They feel excited about a trip, their head, you know, tags it with that with the, uh, the sticker of anxiety, you know? And now you're, what, what's wrong with me? You know, no, you're excited. You're going some fucking, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this whole idea, it's just, it just has certain like uh, tags or whatever, you know, when they put a thing on a package and it only has a finite thing and whatever comes by after it claims it, just sticks a thing. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's an indication depression is setting in. It's not a fucking indication depression is setting in usually. It's just something coming and going. But therefore, but we give it name, we stick something on it, and then a little uncomfortable feeling is, is pre presented as it's setting off a lifelong depression. It's fucking insane, isn't it? And it would be funny, and it is funny, when there's no faith in it. But when there's faith in it, it seems as real as real can be. When it's when the faith starts moving away from it, that's when you start laughing at that shit that used to take really seriously. Because it's not taken seriously anymore. Yeah. So you think, wow, how did it go from this little discomfort because I ate a pea got stuck somewhere in my intestine to a lifelong depression? It's pretty amazing that it can move that quick. Taking one little pot of... One little like uh, discomfort for five seconds as an indication you're going into a giant de depression belt. Yes. What could what could seemingly make that so? Not you, but faith. Yeah. And the thing is, there's a lot of faith in you. Yeah. That's why you keep seemingly appearing to be real. It's only faith that gives it any light. Yeah. So as what Jesus, one of he's supposed to say, we started right, yeah, yeah. What Jesus was supposed to said, you know, uh, as you believe, so it is. Yes. So, but what's allowing that to be true is faith. Yeah. So we are in a way a director of faith. One of the aspects of dreaming, for the dreaming to seem to be real, there must be faith in it. And so the dreaming does isn't producing any faith. It's dreaming. Yeah. It's an appearance. Yeah. It doesn't generate itself. We take it to be real. That's faith. Yeah. So faith is coming from this side. It's not dreaming isn't pouring faith over you and pinning you down. No, you see it. Yeah. And then the false evidence appears real to you. Yeah. Or really, it becomes, appears, it's first of all appearing real as you, because if you want to use your terminology, the small self. And then as that small self, then a lot of false evidence appears real. So the false evidence that was garnered out of that one minute of discomfort saying it's the beginning of a lifelong depression, because it is false evidence, yeah, gets through because what's Noticing the false evidence is false evidence in and of itself. The small self is not, there isn't one. And there isn't a big self. <laughs> That's duality. Duality would be there would be a small self and a huge self. There isn't. There is no self. There's no thing. thing this is a movement without a, without a second. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. Every time you think you started, the race started a long time ago. It's just been, you just joined it at like the 84th lap. 
you know, and then you you have a story. I just joined the race. You've been on the same oval for quite a while, quite a while. Yeah, it just keeps presenting. You know, it gets so lazy. You see the same tree at you know loop eighty four as loop twenty second. You start getting indications. Hey, wait a minute. I'm just going around circles this life. I thought I was progressing infinitely going from past into the present to a future, but no, it's just, <laughs> and then <laughs> if you start becoming a somewhat, you know, two levels above a coconut, you recognize the scenery looks just like it did lap 22 as it does lap 84. They maybe put the palm tree over here, but it's like, wait a minute. And you start getting suspicious of things, don't you? I hope so. I mean, that's the beginning of the first, like scratching on the cocoon from the sentient trance we've been in, where you start seeing what's going on. And this is what satsang is. Satsang and non-duality is presenting an understanding which is premised on being ourselves reality. So let's understand what's going on from that. And the first thing we're not, we're going to explain what's going to happen when something that is not you says, reads being ourselves reality, it will believe that it's reality. We need to warn you about that because that's what happens because this thing here is being us, oh, um, reality. Just like a lady once said, I lost my ego, but everyone else's ego is bothering. Me. Yeah. So there's this idea, it's just, a, so you need warnings, yeah? You can't wake up uh, on your own in a sense. You have to wake up to the fact you're always awake and then recognize through the understandings of satsang and non-duality, there's a mental activity that goes on that doesn't wake up. It's mechanically just claiming what's ever happening. So if there seems to have been a waking up, it's going to claim to be the one who woke up, which is basically going back into the trance, so to speak. Yes. So the claiming, and you you can see it if you've ever had those, uh, an event like a, they give it a name called epiphany or something. Let's say you just mind your own business, something interrupts Paul and the story of Paul and things happen and uh and then i've had a few of them or it had they had a few of me really and then usually what would happen when that coincided with the ending of the epiphany was a, a, a line of thought which is i'm having an epiphany as soon as the self got off the you know the uh off the ropes came out of the knockout it immediately claims just like it always does and now it says it had the epiphany which actually the epiphany was an event just glaringly uh, revealing the absence of self, it's really, yes? There's not an extraction of self and then there's a new space, there's an absence of self. Yeah, there's no self that has to be removed or get that motherfucker out of here. There's none of that, it's an appearance. It's us masquerading as something else. And if you just, if you stop trying to look at it from the it and see it from what you are, yeah, that awareness, that awareness is going to do so much more than all the books will do. You'll see something finally. And maybe what you read in the book will be illuminated in your life. You'll see it. You'll see, wait a minute. I had the experience of seeing my true reflection in the pond, in the water, with the big lion and I realized I was a lion. Not that I became a lion, but I have always been a lion. I'd never been the sheep, yes? And then, okay, the old lion has other things to do. He splits, yeah? You, you, you can't stay at the pond all day to keep you know, getting your reflection maybe. You got things to do. And so you're gonna move. And what happens when the young lion moves away from that water and moves away from the old lion yeah, without the information, without the understanding that something's going to trigger, yes, because maybe you think you've been given the knockout punch. You completely got it. You're totally awake. The mental state isn't. 
the mechanical aspect of us isn't. It's just going to claim whatever you, whatever you're seemingly pontificating or thinking you are at. It's going to claim it. Yeah. So the young lion sees it's a it's a lion. No matter how many years it thought it was a sheep, the length of years didn't take the length of time to not be a sheep. Yes, it was immediate. You've never been a sheep. It doesn't have, all right, I've got a, it's going to take months not to be a sheep. No, it isn't. It's going to, you're going to realize you've never been a sheep. Yes. If you don't see that, that event of just the recognition of what is, let's say, as best you can here, seeing your a lion is going to be co-opted by the programming of the sheep. You're going to make about, you'll make it about four steps from the water and five minutes from when the old lion split, and you'll be thinking, man, you'll be thinking from the sheep. Yeah, and you'll be, exactly. But the thing is, it doesn't happen to, this, to the state where we believe that we're a sheep. See, this is the point. If we don't see it happening, it, the assumption that you're already a sheep just takes the place of any lion, yeah? The experience of the lion will drop, but the, the, the historical sense of being a sheep will get reinforced. See, this idea isn't about you feel like a self, you feel like you've been a self. Yeah, it's historical. It uses time to galvanize itself, yeah? So when, when selfing arises, it says it's been here for a long time. And when it claims one doing, it infers by that one claiming that it's the claim, it's the doer of tons of things. Yes. Or one vision, I've been the one who's seen every vision. Yeah. So you're not you're not at the position of saying, I'm I'm stopping the whole process of becoming self. You take the head has you believing you already are one. And then the only possibility that seems to be available is I want to get out of it. Obvious. It's feeling. I feel really discomfort, uncomfortable, and I think it has something to do with this. And that's its perfect lock for its like open air prison. Once you try to start getting out of it as it, you fall into a statement, and but it's so much different, vividly living it. But you fall into a statement of self trying to get out of self. Yeah, you don't realize what you're calling Jan is. Basically, for all intents and purposes, is living as a self at that moment. And that self wants to get out of its objectified idea of self. Self can't get out of self, you see? So you, it's important to see if you're Jan or not. If you're not Jan, then there's no need to get out of self. And you really get the relief from self by, never, by realizing you were never in one. You've never been a self, yeah? It's not like I finally out self myself and I've left selfing. No, you've never been one. So the joy of this message is the relief is, is before the out. It comes before the in. So this is not a dualistic movement. I'm in something, I wanna get out of it, yeah? This is what self says. I'm in self and I wanna get out of self, but un, un, unknowing maybe to you, there's a the small print as self. <laughs> so there's self, I wanna get out of self, sounds pretty good as self. There's the little, there's where you get, that's where the uh, contract gets you. <laughs> because if you, if you had gotten the previous, the, the first page, self can't get out of self. So this is the understanding to deal with the second page of self trying to get out of self, which is the first page, self can't get out of self. So while you're thinking you're getting out of self, it may be self can't get out of self. So on page two, we refer you back to page one. <laughs> we don't send you to page three. <laughs> we go back to page one. Yes, go ahead, Hunter. Self can't get out of self. Yes. Aren't you with yourself? Yeah, of course you are. No, it's not against the rule. Negating is, the negating here isn't you're erasing something that was there, not to be there. It's negating that it was ever there. 
this isn't like a mental denial with with good sharp scalpels it's it's negating you're negating the reality of things that you took to be real basically yeah and instead of going through not you know netty netty not this not this because usually as you go to not this not this there's an assumption this is saying not this this so this we're just starting at the first netty netty so you don't have to go through the thousands of not this not this, just not this this <laughs> and you you'll lose interest in netty netty after about four things because it's like in the course there was a you know through all my speculation i figured the big problem was the body identification yeah it's the body identification blocking me off from the spirit and everything so there was a, a lesson in the course of miracles uh, still there when i got introduced to it and so i would sort of chant it almost i am free i am just as god created me whatever and then about a little while later when the land when the understanding of non-duality landed i realized the only thing that would be chanting it's not a body is a body identification you see so my chanting i wasn't a body was reinforcing the body identification if you could look at that example there's a huge principle in that. It just explains a lot of, of the fluff you're gonna seemingly have to machete yourself through. It'll just dissipate. Yes? You're trying, <laughs> you're doing things. Ramana says it, Ramana Mahashi, in a very nice way. He said, he, he, again, we're, we're usually starting at page one as a given. I am a separate thing that wants to merge into the allness, yes? So that's the page one. What non-duality is doing is the lost pages that come before it, right? And it, they're not lost. You just started at this page, so you think it's one. But that page has been, you've been led there. The head led you there and said, all right, this is the starting point and you're fucked already, <laughs> yeah? but it, we found the secret secret manifest manifesto there's a few pages before which tells you everything about the mistake that's on page one which is i'm going to uh attain reality yeah sounds and it, a lot of people would pat you on the back for that drive but if you read the pages before you'll see the fallacy of page one and that it's actually one trap setting off many more traps so he goes okay this is how page one got produced and there's a presupposing which is wow so the supposing of page one was way before page one presupposing of a non-existent thing what uh being existent yes so this thing this body you've ever seen a party that you knew and then saw them in a funeral dead you may have had a hit, hey, that was an Uncle Fred when you see the body. Though the body was the body that you called Uncle Fred all those years. Once again, you see it, but at that moment, you're not calling it Uncle Fred because something is different. The animating principle doesn't seem to be animating Uncle Fred. So you realize that ain't Uncle Fred. Yeah, same Uncle Fred that every time you saw it, you, ah, that's Uncle Fred. One time, that ain't Uncle Fred, why? Something was not uh, apparently operating at this one point when you went, that's not Uncle Fred, which is the I am, the self-existence, yes? So the body was there, but there was no existence in it, okay? So the presupposing that the non-existent thing is existing, that's basically is like the, the under, that's like the preamble to page one. There's a non-existent thing that's an existent thing. This is what we start at as page one. We don't see that there's a presupposing a non-existent thing. That's in the previous page that no one gets to see. So, all right, I am a thing. I don't, I've missed the, a non-existent thing. I've missed it completely. I'm a thing and I want to get salvation for myself. I want to get relief. I want to, I want more. I want this, I want that, yes? all premised on that I am this thing. Yes, everything. All of it's premised on this, which was presupposed. It is a thing, but it's a non-existent thing. 
What's made it different is we take it to be that which is existing. So we're calling, when we say I'm conscious, the I that is being referred to is pictured as a body. So now you, in a sense, you're telling yourself that the body is that which is conscious, which is not true. Yeah, you see? So this page one, and you're not going to get an answer at page 80. It's the before, it's the preamble, whatever. <laughs> That's what you got to read. We're sick and tired. It just keeps adding chapters and nothing ever fucking works. Really. It's before, it explains everything. All right, so this is the explanation. Something is presupposing something. I would say the head, the mechanical mental activity is presupposing this idea that we're a long lasting independent separate thing. Yeah. With the, and in a sense, the thing may be correct, but we're not any of it. Yeah. And it's, and it's not long lasting independent separate. It's just, let's say a thing, but it's a non-existent thing. Yeah. Would explain everything if you saw that. All right. Presupposing non-existent thing. And then the non-existent thing is presupposed to be the existent one and it wants salvation. So he says, well, what happens if that's the, if that's the page starting at that, right? right? Well, page two would be spirits. Let's say space page two, one example, spiritual seeking. Okay. Based on the premise that you're a non-existent, that you're an existent thing. Yeah. That you're the one that's doing everything, seeing, feeling, thinking. Yeah. And then page two, maybe in life you were led to some discomfort. So you've tried a lot of things and then you went into a spiritual activity with the hopes that you could get reunited with that which you felt you have separated from. You're, it's really incredibly profoundly dramatic, the presentation. But I'm, I'm going to, is anyone, everyone looking? I'm going to surrender my life. I'm telling everyone I'm going to India. I'm vowing never to. I'm never going to talk to you again. My, but I'm calling you now to tell you I'm never going to you know, vow. And I'll, I may, I'll be making YouTubes the whole time. You can watch my complete merging into the oneness as the two-ness. All right. So we're looking for something. Yeah. If your spiritual practices themselves in this condition are actually reinforcing this mistake, how can they destroy it? Yes. So my wanting to not be a body seen or held as a body was reinforcing the body identification. It was a perfect illustration of what Ramana just presented. Yes, exactly. You couldn't get it. That's why I use it. It's a beautiful, succinct, beautiful thing of exactly that. Page one ain't page one in this book of life. It isn't. They, they ripped out. They couldn't rip it out, but they've just, they've gilded page one. So it almost made it like a honey pot. So the attention and interest or like in Buddhism, the cherishing of self is sufficient to keep us blind to all the pages before. And so we start at page one, which immediately is going to produce these effects that non-duality will describe quite clearly through its understanding of being ourselves reality, the greatest mystery is reality, wanting to attain reality. I don't see that happening. Well, is uh, Paul, are you trying to know the truth? Yes, there you go. That's an example of reality because Paul, AKA is reality, unbeknownst to seeming the activity of Paul, completely beknownst to the being of Paul, yes? Therefore, we are already that which we would love to be. We are already that. It's just not going to look the way you thought. Thank God. It isn't. It's never going to. It may, you know, like they say, a broken clock is right twice a day. You know, it may some, sometimes, but usually it's going to surprise you constantly. Because what you thought you were going to produce with great strains of interest and effort and thought became obvious by being disarmed with all the effort and thought and great concentration and all that shit. It was the real liberation is from the need to be liberated. The small s in your case needs to be liberated. This message is you're liberated from that which needs to be liberated. You are not that. 
It does, it's not going to be something that's being produced. You've never been that. It doesn't need any producing because it already is. Yes? It's sort of like, how real was the dream when you were taking it to be real? Pretty damn real. When you didn't take it to be real the next morning, it was unreal. Who's giving it the meaning it has? You. Yeah. Everything is really premised on your condition. It can be a manufactured mental one, yes, which most of us are wading through and trying to do whatever. Or it can that that page one can be seen from the prior page. And so the, the awareness can see the manufacturing of this pre, this presupposing of this non-existent thing being an existent thing who wants something. And in this case, wants salvation. And therefore, the spiritual practices themselves that that person is practicing is reinforcing this fucking mistake. How can they destroy the mistake? Because you can't destroy an imagined mistake to begin with. You can just see part of the mistake was giving it a reality. There's no mistake that needs to be corrected. That's the beauty of this solution. When you're in it, when you're seemingly in the problem, you need a freaking solution and you're coming here like you probably came to a lot of other fucking meetings looking for it, yeah? But this solution tells you there was no problem. Beautiful, beautiful, because you know, if you had a solution, you could probably lose it. But in this case, you don't have anything. You're as naked, you're the emperor with no clothes and that's how it goes. No matter how many clothes you put on, there's always the knowledge that there's the emperor has no clothes. Yes, it's a very nice thing to live with. Yeah, because it's an un, it's a knowledge that's not been acquired, doesn't need to be polished, doesn't need to be maintained. It's a knowledge like we speak about. I'm onto it last few weeks because uh, it captures it again. The idea of when you leave your house and you go to work, do you forget you have a house? If you have a place to live, if you're working even far away from it, do you forget that you have a place to live? Do you have to remember all day that you have a place to live? That knowledge is there, very influential, but there's no, you're not, there's no thought or effort to provoke the knowledge. The knowledge is an underlying condition that all the other shenanigans rest on. And by resting here, you'll see the nature of the, the restless shenanigans. And you'll see really the restless the shenanigans are used to sort of speed up around this imaginary idea so as if it appears to be real, yes? So what you are needs problems. So it can say these are mine because there's nothing there. So it has to appear to be there by claiming all this shit here. Yes. So it's, it's like a contract. You need the shit. Yeah. And then you have a story that you do anything to let it go. But in, in, in the schematic of your electronics, there's cognitive dissonance. There's a huge drive not to have that thing removed. No one has to wake up. You're inherently awake. Well, come right here, come here. None of us have, uh, have awoken. All of us are awake. That's a different thing. The inherent condition is awake, yeah? Yeah, and here in the dreaming, if you're in the course, dreaming is, is, a, is the way the course demonstrates the falsity of this place and that we are the dreaming of this place, yeah? that there is no dream, there's no place, there's dreaming of places, yeah? So here's the awakeness, that's a fact, being ourselves reality, okay? As Ramana says, so let's say awakeness is a fact. And here in this drama, we can seem to be awake to that fact, or we can seem to be asleep to that fact, yeah? It doesn't change the fact. So when you lose interest in being the one who's seemingly asleep to that fact, because there's a huge amount of interest being fucking funneled down into that story, when you lose interest in that, the wakeness just bleeds through. Yeah. Great. And then don't, and don't grab it and don't put a leash on it 
Don't put a collar on it. Don't try to train it. Just fucking have faith. It's always available at all times. And so it is. Yeah. And it's an underlying knowledge. You don't need to build a wall around it. It doesn't need protection. It's not in, it's not in the, uh, the huffing and puffing up on the surface. Yes. It's, it's a basis like we talk about in recovery. You know, you make, you know, there's two possibilities in recovery. One basis is trust in the infinite. One other basis is trusting the finite self. Yeah, that's it. Okay. You'll know the tree by its fruit. So if you're sitting here completely flipped out about next week, that's trusting the finite self. Obviously. I'm not saying you're doing it. See, this is what people, this is the stubbornness of this belief. They believe if there's something doing or happening, there's got to be someone doing it. No, the, me the mental activity is mechanical. It's not AI. It's not growing in awareness. It's mechanical. Whatever or whatever condition that you are, it's going to claim that condition. Yeah. So if you think you're the awakened one, it will claim that condition. And therefore, the awakened one will be probably surrounded by a lot of unawakened others. <laughs> and then he'll, and then they'll, you know, the dyes will get higher and the seats will get bigger and they'll be looking down on you more. And you'll be thinking, yes, they have something I don't have. And they'll be thinking, fuck, I don't want to have anything to do with these people. But I got that mortgage to pay. So <laughs> it's going to be a contracted hell. So. Yeah, so this is the satsang to me, association with truth. Sit around. Non-duality will provide a pair of glasses to look at things, it will. It has some basic understandings that if you sit and look at what's going on with those glasses, you're gonna see things that you don't see when you're looking from what's going on. Yeah, when you're seeing what's going on and the one that thinks it's going on too has another going on. <laughs> There's no noun that's at the river mouth that's everything that the river's bringing is hitting the noun. Mine, mine, this happened to me. No, it's not. You'll see that, yeah? You'll see that from what you are. You will, it's, you're seeing it now. It's just getting so quickly misinterpreted back to the same story, yeah? that before you know it, you're on page one. And it tells you, no, you're, you're on chapter 12, but it's all based on page one. Yeah, you wanna get relief in chapter 12, get relief from page one, seriously. Trying to constantly get relief from chapter 12 is gonna produce a lot more chapters. <laughs> you might as well just go to the author page, disown the authorship, yeah, and then start seeing things. You know, you won't start seeing things. You'll you'll see that. You'll see the you thinking it's seeing things anew. You'll see that. Yeah, and after you see what you're not a while, there is an intimation. It's like a resin. It's almost like a a powdery thing comes over even the action figure, where the action figure has now been muted to a point where there's a recognition you know, of its non-entity type, yeah? It does. And it then uh, it gives up the policeman role and trying to direct traffic. It just sort of puts its hat down and retires. <laughs> In a lot of ways, just fucking, this is going on. I have no idea what's happening. I never really ever did. And if this is above my pay scale, help. <laughs> <laughs> Some, something inform me of what you would like me to know because I don't I think I know tons of shit but I know I don't know shit yeah so yeah and then you just wake up and come here if this is your seat of sun yeah do you think I prepared for this obviously it doesn't look like it <laughs> it doesn't well, we don't have a great production <laughs> we're just flying out by the seat of our pants but, uh, you know, it's like an unspoken yes to me.
it's like the last answer. And now it's just the living of it. You know? There's no trying to ex uh, experience it or get it or gain it. It's the living of it. You heard Sat saying the, the chips have been moved. The game is a different game. I, it's not like, you know, strip poker. It's something else. And uh, you're just traveling. Yeah, things happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to describe because that would take some time to think about it. And I don't even want to do that. So it's just basically the day goes, I'm here, then I'll be somewhere else later. And uh, yeah, there I have. I forgot the Zoom was going on. It just came to mind right now. I was wondering what these, it looked like a quilt somebody made, mosaic colors with some moving character right there, me seemingly. Wow. Yeah. I'm happy you came, Jan. You have to see one thing. No, you don't actually. But this is why I do this in a sense. I went to satsang and I didn't feel something that was going on was emphasized enough, which is this story about what happens after the young lion is revealed that it's a lion at the watering hole. Because you can't, you may not be able to live with the old guru lion, and you may not be able to be in a clear, controlled setting. So you can get, you know, the surface isn't moved, so you can get a clear reflection that you're a lion. It may be chaotic, choppy that day. Yeah, things happen in life. And to know that no matter what condition you seem to be in, something's claiming to be the one that's in that condition. Yeah, it can't produce the condition, but it can claim whatever condition that you're found in, it will claim. It. it doesn't produce the condition, but it will claim to be the one who's experiencing the condition. Yes. And some conditions are an experience. Some conditions are innately you, and therefore you're wanting to experience them is a way of being blind to that, to it, because being uh, if you're being, you're not having an experience of being. Yeah, you're having an experience of everything going on from being. Yeah, the being experience isn't on the table because you're already it. Yeah, you're not going to cut off a little bit of being, and that's going to place it in Bali near a waterfall and have an experience of that being. It's being doing all that. Yeah, we're it. We're it completely. Not as this, obviously, but we're it. That's the message. If you read it, if you read, read the Course of Miracles. The message is basically yeah, nothing ever happened. Yeah. That's what, you know, first they say here, let's use the bomb, B A L M, of forgiveness. And then they bring you to the point where of atonement, which is nothing ever happened to be forgiven. Yes. Or the idea of Ramana Maharshi. Yes, here, in this condition, bro, you're really screwed. You're your own worst enemy. Surrender. Yeah, totally valid. And then at another point, he says, well, who's there to surrender and to whom? Yeah, so there's, in one level, it's ridiculous, the idea of surrender. And then on another level, it's the appropriate thing to surrender. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the same person said that. Same person, supposedly, some of the writings, Ramana said, there's only two possibilities. You search the origin of your misery and see it's not you, basically. Or you admit that you're outmatched and surrender. Thy will be done. Yeah? That power. Yes, that's it. And then the same person seemingly says at another setting, hey, who's going? who is there to surrender and to what or to whom? Yeah? So basically... The, the state that you would like to find through surrender is already available. Has, the game has already been gone through. Yeah. We're just like repeating it. We've got it on like a replay. But in fact, it's all over. You won. <laughs> You've been successful. You are what you're looking for. <laughs> I haven't did a, I didn't, I haven't done enough. Oh, great. I'm happy you haven't done enough. It's your, didn't you ever read uh, Zen? You ever hear Zen? 
yeah, so Zen, famous story in Zen. And of course, I'm probably changing it my own devices. But there was, uh, and, it, you know, the patriarchs of Zen were all made up. Yeah, they just made up a lineage and shit, I think, really. When they were doing it, there wasn't a patriarch. And they came up with the patriarch. So the third patriarch was a character. And he was like a peasant, you know, living. He just sold shit at a, at a farmer's market, so to speak. And then there was this master and all these guys living in a monastery. And the master was ready to give the bowl and the robe away to what, who he thought had the clearest view. Yeah. So he had everyone in the in the monastery say something and so the one that everyone thought was the clearest guy says well my life will be spent polishing the mirror of clear awareness or what say sounded good and so this peasant came in and just wrote down fuck what some gosh, and, and so the master saw that and found the dude and the dude didn't want the bowl in the robe. He's fuck. Don't give me that shit. No, you got no. I don't want anything to do with it. And that was the third patriarch. Yeah, he just saw the emptiness and the. What are you gonna see while polishing the mirror? The idea of being the you polishing the mirror. Yeah, there's something before the polishing of the mirror. Yeah, there is no you. So when there's a polishing of the mirror, you know, it won't be used to claim, it will be tried to be used to claim there's a polisher, but you'll have what? An understanding that that's mechanical. Yeah, this is what happens. A lot of people, they believe they've gotten something and there's an identification with the mechanicalness of this body. And they're always unpleasantly surprised when it doesn't seem to have gotten the message that it's awake. It's acting like it usually does. It got mad driving and shit like that. And their their heads are very confused because they assume they completely changed and they still had a subtle identification with this. And they assume this would completely change if they completely change. And they get dumbfounded once again because they're not seeing it clearly. Because this goes on its own merry fucking way. Yeah, it does. It, it may go through some changes, but they're not essential, necessary. And if you try to, you know, someone who's whatever has lost interest in self and he starts demonstrating or she weird shit, if you try to make what how they demonstrate life as a path, you're not going to go to where they are. They're just expressing where they are in this way. The way isn't the way to get to where they are. They got there no way. Yeah, they got there on having never left. So this whole idea, the misseeing of shit, yeah. This person, that's what, you know, they don't, all right, step four. You know, to me, it's great to just leave everyone dangling with their own devices, trying to figure shit out. And sooner or later, they're going to see they're not their devices. Yeah. It's not your intellect. It's not your understanding it's not your anything and it's wonderful when it gets starved so that you can see that and then you're at the you're at the all you know the forever giving water fountain yeah you're there on the based on on having never left you never even you've never even arrived you can't even make up a giant story about arriving because when you seem to arrive it tells you on having never left so therefore, your idea of arriving was negated like that. Yeah, negated by the exact premise that you were trying to arrive at. When you arrive, it tells you on having never left. What? So, all right, so people arrive about 30 fucking times and they finally get it. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna see if anyone, anyone here have a question? Yeah, although I wanted to say I'm glad you that you spelled bomb because I heard B O M first. That's right, B A M. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've learned from this <laughs> seeker in the sword has done a lot of damage. I think I got a chat from that today. Oh, on YouTube or something, some YouTube comment. The seeker in the sword. I know it's S O U G H T. Sought seeker, seeker. 
if it was seeker and sword, you wouldn't want it to be is the seeker sword. Yeah. Seeker sword. Ah. <laughs> seeker sword. Ah. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah, Esther has her hand up. All right. I can't see, so I'm just winging it. Uh, too bright? Yeah, it's very bright here. Paul. Yes. Um, my best friend. Yes, my best friend is into the Ramtha school because I brought it up. And the idea is um to get jazzed by doing a, like a legacy walk, like I've always been, or I've as long as I can remember, I've always been, or whatever that would be. Like I'm all I've uh, always been as God created me. Uh my sinlessness is guaranteed by God. I've always been that. And then so there's this experience of the jazzness. That's one thing. And then uh then I'm being told. Hold on one second, Esther. This is where we're just questioning. Who is that that's doing all that? Who is that that's going to be all that all those attributes? I'm telling you, it's a false premise. That's I all. I agree. I see it now that we're talking. Okay. Great. The thing is that I'm being told by this individual that he can't come and be with me and take me for a walk because he has to stay in the cocoon to um, actually experience that uh, completely. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. See, and people in Zen bitch slap are always available at all times because you have nothing going on. <laughs> it's it's working sorry. out great. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then catch them in a legacy walk. You're not going to catch them at a retreat. You're not going to catch them. Oh, I, I got to finish the CD. No, they're usually available. And then the other thing for me is that, um, I'm being told by this individual to stop seeing doctors and uh, I'm being told by Joe Dispenza's people that um, that it could take many, many years of focus before I do give up the illness in my mind, uh, the experience of an illness that is in the mind. And um, well, what does your gut say to you? Have my you gut says to, to me that it's just a decision and uh just to relax that when it's time to fall away it will all right well go with that maybe check it out see what and then you'll be able to judge the tree by its fruits you can't <laughs> judge the tree before the fruits appear yeah mm -hmm. as jesus said he said judge the tree by its fruits a good tree cannot bring forth bad fruit a bad tree cannot bring forth good fruit says judge the tree by the fruit what we're trying what a lot of people do is they're judging the tree they haven't tasted the fruit yet. So maybe follow your gut, see what happens. If you're getting confused and hearing too much, listen to your gut or ask yourself, what is it I know that I don't want to know? Because you see, when something fails, there's always that out that someone else told you to do it. Yeah. So we don't take accountability for it. You know what I mean? You're holding, you got it. It's like the bet's hedged. Well, I, it was them that told me just whatever you're doing, if it was them that told you or not, take it all. Yeah, you're doing it because you're not and be accountable. Yes. Yes. And you don't. Yeah. So you have it in your gut. Just And then if you have faith in that, take the next step on that faith and see what happens. Well, yeah? right. And, and I then was... if it works out share at this meeting about it i was yeah. telling my mother she was listening to joe dispenza um because i put it on for her and she was saying how she had to take the course to get rid of her diabetes and i actually said to her today and i felt that i was really talking to myself i said to her you are required you are required by yourself to have this diabetes right now and when you don't need it it will fall away and i knew i was talking to myself about the mental illness well, the thing is, too, if you read the course with the you and I are dreaming ourselves out of the dreaming, and as we do, the dream will get happier. So in the storybook version, <laughs> it's set up that that person is going to arrive, quote unquote, where they already are through a certain vehicle, let's say the Course in Miracle. So that's how it's play, played out. Yes? Yes. And therefore, there's incredibly beauty in that. That's how something that happens out of time can appear in time to happen. Yeah. So you have a story. I had my little thing. 
I met this, did that, went here, blah, blah. Yes? Mm -hmm. Change anything, obviously. That's how it went. Yeah? Was that the cause of it all? No. No. That's an expression. That's a story written around the cause. The cause is shit's here. Yeah? What always happens can happen any way it wants. It can by reading the phone book from Z to A. Yeah? It can do whatever. You can walk around Walmart and an iron can hit you in the head and things, the, the uh, waters will part. You'll see. It doesn't matter. Do you think it's Walmart that holds that space? No. Yeah. So. Well, what's happening is uh, the spending has been off the hook, like $12,000 spent in less than a month. And now I'm into the. Um, well, then chill out and don't spend any money today. It's not like that. It's not like that. I get inspiration as if it was a uh, complete guidance. And I can't. I. I, I just trust that, that I'm being guided. And when I'm guided to return today, I returned $2,800 worth of materials. Uh, yeah. And, and it's well, just. Esther, Esther, please though, the action figure may be impaired some level. So when that's <laughs> true, then sometimes you need to listen, not to everyone, but some people you trust concerning certain things. Yeah. And just hear, because they don't have a dog in the hunt, so to speak. And maybe you'll hear something from a clearer or a more objective position. This is and happening. They, they land and go, wait a minute. Yeah. This is happening. I invested in the QQQ because I don't think the stock market's going down. And it's working. And I put most of the money back into the uh, brokerage account so that it's safe from me spending it. So I'm oh, listening. Good. Yeah, good. So there you go. And just, um, yeah, see, I know, I don't believe anyone ever listens to anyone else, really. <laughs> they ultimately are going to do what they're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm happy you're here, honey, and get solace, whatever you can from the community. And uh, this is the most disarming situation. Yeah. The Just thing that's, that's the roughest is, um, can I accept wellness? Like, because I'm trying to. No, you can't. I'm trying to manipulate this the sickness to get more money from the government, and I feel like I have to be sick no, in order no, to. Let me just say something, honey. In recovery, we would say no. I can't. You no, can't, I can't. What? Do the hill. Do the healing. Just admit you can't, and then a lot of shit happens. Yeah. Okay. Instead of trying to, you know, should I or shouldn't I, just admit you can't. Because if you could, you probably would have done it earlier. It's true. There you go. So basically, just give up the ghosts for a second. You know? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, this stuff is revealed. I think that a lot of things happens in this uh, blind condition of what is it you know that you don't want to know so when you don't want to know something you know you try to hear it from other people <laughs> a lot of the time and you and so you don't like the person so it gives you oh keep on not knowing that you know what I mean and um, just tell the truth about that in your gut there's knowledge yes and a lot of knowledge is going to come when you're in the state or posture of I don't know so see what happens, yeah? I'm screwed, honey, as an action figure in so many levels. I just lost interest in it. And, and you know, I'm not climbing fences and grazing in someone else's pasture, behaving myself pretty good. Yeah, there's no need to have 24-hour uh, surveillance. I'm just grazing in my little corner. There's not much going on, yeah? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you, if the uni universe snaps them right there, it's the availability is uh, you never get gypped ever. You're always here, sleeping, awake, everything. Yeah. So we wish you the best, Esther. Stay with us. Yeah. Please. Uh, Admit that if you can't take yourself too seriously, just admit you can't do that. 
Yeah, and then I, I really feel something can do for us if we stop trying to do it for us, yeah? Really, if you keep, just admit you fucking, it's failed. It's not, it's not uh, meat for the self grinding of guilt and shame. It's just, a, you admit your pay scale. There's a lot of innocence and forgiveness in that. Yeah, I don't fucking no idea what's going on. I walk around in a, it's like a dumbed down state. I love it. <laughs> Just, I'm just concerned about Alan because or something. <laughs> you know? I'm concerned about my friend because he, he's really into this Ramtha stuff right now and he thinks it's going to change whatever his uh, failures have been that they'll, all of a sudden they'll change like he's always felt that it would and maybe it never they does will. it never yeah, maybe does this is how he's going to dream himself out of the dreaming who knows yeah that's possible it's not about Ram whatever the people it's not about these people, it's not about the, the boot isn't going to take you to boardwalk on the Monopoly board. Yeah. The yeah. grace will bring you maybe to the boardwalk. The boot is, yeah. 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 So <laughs> they like that one. <laughs> I'm feeling like an old boot. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> I'm getting, the sun is much more powerful than I thought today. Thank God I put some sunscreen on. Huh? I can sit way back. Yeah, I'm going into the void. He just disappeared around 2340 at the Zoom meeting. He'll be back. <laughs> All right, Esther, I, our love is with you. And uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Anyone else, Mike? Yeah. Oh, we have Andy, and then somebody by chat, and way. then Mike Clark. It's not on this side. No, no. It's you ready for Andy? I'm ready for Andy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, hey, Paul. I was gonna say, yeah, I got some sunscreen on. It looks pretty bright over there. I have um, some. Yeah. yeah, man. Um, so I, for me, I kind of the concepts like real, unreal, existence, non-existence. That was my big. That's what caught got me caught up because to me, uh, or it seems that those concepts get resolved in non-duality. Yes, because uh, that's duality. And so that in that way, then the lion is as real and unreal as the, um, as the sheep is. Well, yes, absolutely. But uh, the lion, AKA sheep will use that to do some other shit with. So don't get too much into that. Well, I'm just thinking that like what Ramesh says about the, um, the uh, you know, the, the mind, body, uh, whatever um, biological unit that has its own destiny is created, has its own destiny um, and is essential to be a part of the dualistic nature of reality so that, um, you know, so that we can come to understand it's not real in the first place, but that say that the, the sheep has its own destiny. It has, it's, it, it can go on. It, it, it has its own existence, its own life. It's real and unreal, just as the, just as the well, lion is real and unreal. Yes, but see how we're using that example isn't, we're producing a difference, but it's not like there's a sheep and a lion. Well, I mean, as long as you're not attached to either one. Yeah, but you're not one thing or the other thing. You're yeah. both and nothing. Well, yeah, we would go with the neither. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because both are appearances. So you're neither of them. Yeah. yeah. But we use the lion and the sheep to get an imagery across. Yeah. But it, it isn't like the once the sheep is seen, you're a lion. You've never been a lion either. We're using it as an example. Right. Get something across. But I don't like, uh, as a way of inviting people, I don't like jumping to the idea of the absolute. Yes. I feel that's best to be found and, and, and intimated. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. I think it's good that you use both to negate, one negates the other, and then it's, 
yes the whole thing gets negated yeah but yeah sure love it thank you yeah oh thanks andy okay and i'm going to read for uh forget who in chat somebody in chat um mark and uh, i'm going to start with the end because he says the statements feel dualistic to him and he conflated a couple but i i did ask him if, the, if these are the ones he's referring to what's looking is what you're looking for and what's perceived can't be what's perceiving but that feels dualistic to him well carry on see what happens <laughs> okay. yeah, i did mention to him by chat that that's the aspect you can't do in zoom is to starve the questioner so i already mentioned that to him let no it more? go i would just chew on it just keep chewing and see what happens right. okay yeah. so are you ready for mike mike clark yeah okay hey paul i guess you can hear me right Yes, good, yeah. All the way from Mexico, they're called modern science. Great, um, yeah. Hey, Mike. My question is, <laughs> my question is, a couple of days ago, I don't remember what day it was, you said something that's stuck with me ever since. And that is you, you described a situation of being in neutrality, in a condition of neutrality, with no effort or thought on your part or my part or whatever. And uh, that describes my experience to a T at this moment. Great. Uh, that yeah, that's what I mean. recovery. That comes out of recovery. And uh, in the recovery has a, again, it's a way of dreaming oneself out of the dreaming. Or it's dreaming, not oneself. Dreaming out of the dreaming of oneself. But there's uh, a process and that's around step nine or 10 as a, a new condition that will become uh, obvious, which is you'll cease fighting everything, even alcohol. You'll be placed in a position of, of in a position of neutrality with no thought or effort on your part. Uh, the problem will not exist for you. It's, it goes on and on like that. So yes, it's a beautiful statement. Yeah. That was part, that was part of my question is where it came from. That comes from recovery about page around page 84, I think. Yeah, it's very famous uh, part of the recovery uh, because it, at that point, the idea of you efforting and everything is long past gone. And they're just describing the effects on your experience from the condition that you've been put in. Yes. So now something is doing for you what you couldn't do for yourself. And one of that is being placed in a position of neutrality with no thought or effort on your part. Yes. Uh, losing, you know, having no problem with anything, even alcohol, you know, no opinion, shit like that. And reaching a point where day to day, the problem doesn't seem to exist as you anymore. Not bad. Yeah. None of those were produced they were felt and, and observed, yeah, as something that came about uh, that you and I, uh, our understanding, can't really see, yeah, because a lot of stuff in AA is you deal with A and it affects J, yeah? You don't go A to A, you go to A to affect J, so things happen. And uh, after a while, being under its influence, you see a seamlessness of it all of some grace working, yeah? And one of those observations is uh, like, I don't have any distaste or do I have any desire for drugs or alcohol? I'm totally in a neutral position. I could care less. It's as if it never existed for me, really. I don't, no matter where my head is ever whatever vice my head could find itself in, it never appears as a solution. It's amazing where constantly it was on the screen all day and no human power could change that. So something did for what I couldn't, nor could anyone else do to me. And uh, that was more than enough to, uh, that was a, a huge convincing in this life, yes. 
I think it's a huge convincing for me. It's not, it's not an issue of alcohol, but everything. Yes, yes, great. Yeah, it's very It's like cool. there's this pendulum that's just hanging in the middle and is not moving in any direction. That's what it feels like. Great, yeah, I like that description. Yes, that's sort of, we, we dance around that bush, yes. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's really, uh, it's premised if you if you did a like a, a, a an anatomy if you did like an autopsy on it a living autopsy it's it's premised on a loss of interest really yeah the loss of interest and having that interest migrate somewhere else is what provides is what brings you to that condition of neutrality. It's incredible, yeah. The, the loss of interest in everything outside of it. Interest is gaining, is growing on the stillness of the pendulum. That's that's the feeling. You've lost interest in that. In the rest of it, no. That's the only thing I'm interested in now. Oh, oh, you'll lose interest in that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bring it on. That's a... That's like a double a double wallop of ordinariness. <laughs> That's when you enter dog shit awareness. <laughs> Very okay. few people are interested in going there. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. <laughs> okay, yeah. thanks. I appreciate it. See, in that Zen thing, the person that would be interested in keeping the, the pendulum still would be the guy polishing the mirror. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's going to drop, whatever. Well, that all, it doesn't feel like I'm keeping it still. It's just there. Exactly. Yeah, it's just, it's like skin that's past its prime, but it's still dangling. It's going to fall <laughs> off. <laughs> really, it is. You don't even have to peel it off. It falls off. You won't, you'll forget that it's on. <laughs> I feel like, whatever, it's going to take you to whatever degree it takes you. But all these degrees are encompassed by a context of allness and complete equality. <laughs> no grades or lacks and or abundances, nothing like that. There's no opposites there. Yeah, I feel. So yeah, I'm just looking forward to a coffee. So let's get going. <laughs> I got my I got my tan for uh, the week. See, this is a multi-service satsang. I get a tan. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, anyone else, Mike? Uh, yeah, Natalie. All right, Natalie. What time is it? All right, Natalie. Let's go. Let's maybe end at uh, after Natalie. All right. Go ahead, Natalie. Natalie, Earth to Natalie. Come in, Natalie. We've lost you. Okay, it's probably a good thing. You should probably lose me. <laughs> um, no, I don't know what I want to share here, but um, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know. Uh, last night, this this really strange kind of thing happened, and I'm like, not even sure what it was but like I was out in the rain like I was walking to my car in the rain and out of nowhere I was totally dry but my skin was wet like from the rain I don't know it was like some weird I haven't drank or done drugs or anything like that in years but it was like this um like I was experiencing all of this through Natalie in a way but it wasn't me and I don't know I mean I just I don't even know it's now I've just been like all day just kind of like staring off into space like in la la land like not even really thinking and it's just kind of weird I mean I don't know it's I don't know I don't know that's kind of all I, I, I don't say. know and then try to go back over the night and see if some stranger came up to you with a glass of something no, 
They do. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just it's experiences, honey. Things happen. I know. Yeah. But, uh, but in that experience, I didn't bro, feel like I was even there. Prisoners. Yeah. But see. Yeah. Let it let let it return to mist. But I'm looking at it in a wrong way. Okay. Just let it return to mist. Yeah. Yeah. That's my feeling. Okay. Yeah, you Thank know they're going to happen a lot. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, I have strange. I have strange intervals quite a lot. You tend to just uh, again. Where does something stop and start? Yeah, if you see the context, and then you see, let's say, that's always there, and then something starts and stops. It's always. Uh, surrounded by the screen, yeah? This is what happens. You lose interest in the particulars and you never take your seeming eye off the screen. That's what happens, yes? So you're just watching the screen before the movie, during the movie, after the movie, yeah? There's not you watching, but there's an interest in that that brings a levity or a lightness to going through all the appearances that are happening on the screen, yes? Yeah? Yeah, yes, yes. And then what? when that starts happening, a lot of stuff that would go unnoticed on, you know, in the movie, you start having experiences of strange little fugues and shit like that. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Just get a bracelet yeah. with your name on it and a, a chip. I feel like I need one. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I feel like I'm chip. you put it I in and no one will no one will come when you ask for help. I Just feel like it, I'm riding around gonna on put the it, we're gonna put the We're gonna put the nanotechnology on a wafer and it's gonna be <laughs> like a sacrament. All right, we, we know where everyone is. <laughs> yeah, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Natalie for sharing, yes. Just, just, just talk it up to, yeah, being available, yeah. All right, Mike. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think we, yeah, we're ready to go. Okay. The long okay. meeting's ready to go. So, hey, uh, so let's say goodbye, eh? Okay. You, you have over two pages, so that's going to take a while. <laughs> Do we have any, there's no more uh, questions, eh? Or share? No. All right. Okay, let's see. We got Mike C. Nice to see you, Mike. Uh, Mike Z. <laughs> oh, Nick. Yeah, Nick, I think you may need uh, a keg of Paul, not a uh, pail of Paul, a Paul of water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You need a Zen bitch slap, bro, soon. Yeah, you got to come physically close to us. Paul, yeah. are you going to Firehouse? We are, yes. I'm I'm on my way now. I'll get a slap. Oh, way hey, good. Yeah, good. All right. We'll see you there. See you there. Alan. Thank you, Alan. Nice to see you as always. Miss Amelia made a guest appearance. Wow. We've got uh I can't see the oh Natalie. Natalie, thank God you're in the car now. Every nothing's happening. Good. We got Jack. Uh, he's got Ramana Mahashi there, Greg in Minneapolis, Tom in New Mexico. Sorry, I missed the show. <laughs> you missed what show? The Paul show. He just got here. Oh, you did? Yeah, uh, I. Yeah, it's all right. We already know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Time. Uh, yes, thanks. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. I love you, Paul. It's all good. Don't take I it miss. anyway. I know. I'm sort of joking. All right. Uh, Tom, New Mexico. Mickey, Madeira, Matriarch. Yeah. Sherry from San Diego. I got to pick this thing up. Uh, Vlad, nice to see you, Vlad. Thanks for all your support, my friend. 
I'll see you soon. We made it through another Saturday so far. We got Emerson, Long Beach, Irene, Irene, Katan. Hey, Katan, how are you? I don't have time for you to answer. Just good. <laughs> <laughs> Mike C. I think he's left the building. Sally <laughs> Underwood. Uh, Mike is uh, resurrecting. He's rising like the phoenix. We got Andy S. Andy's got wow, got a nice outfit there. Steve from San Diego. Nice to see you, Steve. I knew as always. Always a pleasure, Jonathan. Oh, oh, Johannes from uh, Germany. Johannes has been with us since the beginning. Thank you, Johannes. Pleasure. We got Mia Thank from you, uh, Australia. We have Chris B. Yep, from Massachusetts. Uh, let's see. We've got Roman. Nice to see Roman. Sean. Nice to see you there. Elon. I think I got gotcha. you. Grateful Dave, Tariq from Dover, New Jersey. Angie, ah, the spectacular, smiling Ontar Ontarian. Marco, nice to see you, Marco. Donovan, uh, the whole live meeting has left. They're all, they've all disappeared. Senya, Christina from Kona. Susan K, my latte lady, Tommy, Deborah, Alberta, John K. Is it the famous John K? Hey, listen, thank you, everyone. Uh, also, I, on the uh, on the there's the uh, stuff about Sicily, and if you're interested in, I think we got to have some down payment by the end of April. So just take a look at it. We're gonna have be in Sicily in October for a week and. Uh, yeah. Hey, see, hold on a second. I'll be right there. Hey, hey honey. So, uh, 